In this third episode of Foundry Friday, I will be going over the types of aluminum that works best for doing your own castings. Now, what makes a better aluminum for casting? Well, it's the silicon percentage in the aluminum. Now, the other ones will have a bit of copper in them, which makes them a harder aluminum and heat treatable, but it's more about this silicon. Now, the silicon in the aluminum makes them more fluid, so they will, f when you pour your mold, it makes it fill all the small little details and voids and stuff in your mold and it also makes them less likely to crack. Now I have several examples here of, of aluminum that I would use and would not use. Now the first one I have and oddly enough I do not have one but uh, soda cans. I would not use soda cans. They're just not worth the time. Take them in and recycle them. They're just, they're not worth the time. They're not even remotely a good enough aluminum for doing a casting. Now on these, I will be going from worst to best. Now another one I would not use is like your block billet aluminum. This is a aluminum that is probably rolled out to dimension, cold and gigantic presses and I just I would not use this it probably if you cast it your casting probably would not turn out very well with an aluminum like this it would probably end up being a very soft casting in the end now another type I have used for castings but I use it for castings that I'm not worried about being very strong is your plate aluminum I have used this aluminum for things that are not really structural, things that are not under stress. I have used this stuff for, um, it works in a pinch. If you pour an ingot of this and you cut it in half, you will notice it ends up being a very porous casting. It becomes very soft. It's almost a gummy kind of when you cut it. It's, it's very, very soft. Kind of on that notes is your extruded aluminum, your window frames and whatnot. I have used tons of this in castings, but it it, uh, it ends up being very porous. It ends up being very soft, so nothing structural. Now another type of extruded aluminum that I have not tried is like computer heat sinks. I have a pile of these things. And believe it or not, I have not melted any of them down, but I just have a feeling this would probably be on the same lines as the other aluminums. Probably porous, probably soft. Now I keep mentioning porous. Now what causes that? When you melt aluminum, it actually picks up hydrogen in it. And as that aluminum cools, the hydrogen bubbles will get larger in it, creating little small pores all in it. Now I'm going to be getting into the best aluminums to use. Now best aluminums to use are your stuff that's already been cast. So I have here a couple old motorcycle hubs. These have been die cast in a big casting machine and this aluminum has a higher silicon percentage in them so it makes them flow out better and they end up being a very strong aluminum. Now I've noticed casting these and cutting them in half that they are not nearly as porous as the types that I mentioned earlier. Another type of die cast aluminum is carburetors. I have tons of these old motorcycle carburetors laying around and I've melted some of them down. On lines of die cast is motor parts, weed eaters, um, lawnmower engines, just actual parts underneath the hood of a car those are all die cast aluminum now with engine parts some of them you probably even get into sand cast parts i would say probably things like blocks and heads and transmission housings stuff like that could be an actual sand cast part depending on how old it is um an old flywheel die cast another part here i have that was die cast is an old lawnmower transmission housing all of these are very good aluminums to use um, one aluminum that 
I'm not actually 100% sure, but I always say they're a lot better than any of the others, is pistons out of engines. I don't have any on hand right now, but um, I believe that they are a lot higher quality aluminum, and they have been cast. Most of them are die cast, and I think they're a very good aluminum for doing castings. I believe they're a higher quality aluminum. Whether I am correct on that, I don't know, but I usually cast them in the ingots and keep them separated for like really high strength parts that I want to make. So this will conclude this quick little video for this week of the types of aluminum, things to look for. Like I said, your window frames will work, your plate aluminums will work, but you're not going to get the best results with them. Your better results is with your parts that's already been cast. Your die cast, your sand cast, just stuff that's already went through the casting process. It is formulated for that, it is the proper alloy for that, and it will absolutely work the best for you and be the most structurally sound parts that you could possibly make. And you'll just be happier all the way around. Now a lot of you, some of your die cast aluminums also have been formulated to melt at a lower temperatures. Just some suggestions of things to look for when you're out looking through the scrap pile, finding bits and pieces of aluminum that you can melt down. So until next time, next Friday, not too sure what I'm going to go over. So until then, stay in tune, like, subscribe, I usually don't ask for that kind of stuff but that's okay. So until next time, thanks for watching. See ya.